What's up dudes? Welcome back to the Watt Club YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about Brembo brakes on the Goblin. I put Brembo's on my Goblin. No! God! So today we're going to talk about the pros, the cons, how to do it, what's it cost, everything involved with putting Brembo's on a Goblin. All right, let's start with the pros of putting Brembo's on a Goblin. I put Brembo's on mine because I was worried about brake fade at the track. I don't know if the other ones would have had brake fade, but I didn't really want to chance it, so I figured I'd throw these on here. Second thing, they stop really well. Four piston Brembo brakes have quite a bit of stopping power versus the floating calipers that the Goblin normally runs. Third thing, they look really good. I think that's why everyone on the forum asks about running Brembo's, because they know how good they look and they want them. And lastly, they're really easy to install. Now let's talk about the cons of putting Brembo's on a Goblin. The most mentioned con of putting Brembo's on the Goblin are the stopping power, which I know is a pro, but it's also a con because with the stopping power of the brakes, this car weighs half as much as a Cobalt, so it's a lot of braking power. I got away with it because I'm running a manual brake master cylinder, which we'll talk about later. Another con would be that they are probably significantly heavier. Oh God. Mm. Balls. You know what? Why don't we weigh everything just to see where we're at? I bought this new scale just for this. Stock brake caliper. 10.75 pounds. Brembo caliper and the parts that go with it. 8.37 for a total gain of, oops, okay, that's a loss. Off to a good start. Clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's try the stock front brake rotor. 15 pounds, brake rotor. 18.5 pounds for a gain of so combined calipers and rotors, that gives you a total gain of... Okay, so not quite as heavier as I expected, but still heavier. Another con is going to be no rear parking brake if you run Brembo's in the rear of the car. I already didn't have a parking brake back there, so it didn't bother me too much, but a lot of people either need the parking brake or really want the parking brake, because it's kind of a pain to not have one, or state requirements require you to have a parking brake so I'm not sure how you'd set that up if you do hydraulic or if you just can't run the Brembo's in the rear but you will not be able to have a parking brake with these Brembo calipers in the rear of the car. Another con is going to be the brake master cylinder. If you run the power brakes that come on the car it's way too much braking power so you have to run a manual brake master cylinder so that's just another project you're going to have to get done in order to be able to use these brakes. And then there's wheels. Finding wheels that clear Brembo's gets a little bit more difficult because they have to have enough concavity. You could run the stock Cobalt wheels off the later year Cobalts that already have the Brembo's, but I didn't want to run stock wheels. I wanted something a lot wider. So I found an 18 by 10 and a half plus 12 offset that has enough concavity to clear the Brembo's. You could custom order wheels, but they're a lot more expensive and they take a lot longer to get. I didn't really have the time to wait, so I found these Kanzai wheels that work really well. And then lastly, money. It can get pricey to do the swap, but you've already built the whole car and that was expensive so I wouldn't even count that as a con. So now let's talk about how to install them. They are direct bolt-on. Since they're off a of cobalt, and this is basically a cobalt, they bolt right on. You don't even need to change the brake lines. You're gonna have to machine that front aluminum spacer down about a sixteenth of an inch to move the rotor center of the caliper. Machine. <laughs> See that gap on that side? That side. Identical. The one thing you need to look out for is the wheel bearing shims. It's a factory shim. I don't know what happened to mine. They either got thrown away or they weren't there to begin with. But if you don't have it for the rear, you're going to have to get crafty. I'm not going to tell you what I did. 
The most difficult part of running the Brembos, if you don't already have it, is the manual brake master cylinder setup. I did the manual brake conversion when I built the car, I just wanted to run the manual brakes. There's an awesome write up on the forum that walks you through it step by step, it's what I followed. I'll link it in the description so you can follow it too if you, if you want to do this. Now let's talk about how much it costs. You're going to need at least calipers, rotors, and pads. Maybe hardware. Calipers are about $200 a piece new. Rotors are about $50 a piece new. Pads are about $40 a piece. And then hardware is about $20 a piece for a total, you know, right about here. But that's all new prices off Rock Auto. Then you gotta add tax and shipping. A lot of the Goblin Builders aren't running the Brembos, so they'll be willing to sell you their setup. If you can get the calipers, rotors, and pads off them for a good price, I mean, you could probably have this swap done for under $500. But that'll range anywhere up to about $1,500 if you want all brand new, you want it powder coated, you want drilled and slotted rotors. It's entirely up to you how much you want to spend, really, and how long you want to wait to find parts. The manual brake conversion is about $350. It's about $300 master cylinder plus all the extra stuff you need. It's not a difficult swap, but you do got to bend some brake lines and modify some stuff. So that's probably the most difficult part of the whole swap. So is it worth it? That's up to you. Give it a shot. See how you like it. I really like it. I'd recommend it. But you're going to have to decide if it suits your build or not. So we'll see you soon.